This is the Rocket Magma Mini. It's like the big magma, but not big. It's a 60% form factor membrane gaming keyboard, and it's affordable at just $50. One of the big features of the Magma series is the lighting. You don't get per key RGB on here, but still, it's really bright and it looks good. Even though you're not dealing with individual LEDs, there are still some programmable options for you with 10 LEDs in five different zones and it supports AMO, so you can set it and forget it if you don't care to spend time configuring lighting profiles. Back when I reviewed the full-size Magma, I said it had one of the most impressive RGB lighting system that I'd ever seen on a gaming keyboard at the time. Well, the Mini brings the same concept to this smaller size, but it's not quite as impressive because overall there's less visibility on here. The full-size Magma has all sorts of open areas on it that really lets that lighting shine through, and that's part of what makes it so impressive. Whereas this Mini just doesn't have enough space for that. But it's still an awesome looking lighting system, especially in the 60% category. It's lightweight at just about 460 grams, and that's including the cable. And it's a result of, like, well, it's membrane, so it doesn't have heavy mechanical switches built into there, and also it's a completely plastic build. You're not going to find any metal or aluminum on here anywhere, and that's fine for me because it's targeting a more wallet-friendly price point, so, you know, something has to give to make that work. On the bottom, we got a bunch of rubber pads for grip and one level of flip-out feet for angle adjustment. The cable's fixed to the back of the board and it's offset to the left side, so, yeah, you know, don't go trying to remove it because that's not going to work. And it's just a rubber finish cable, no braiding, nothing fancy, and it's 1.8 meters long, which is pretty good. To help give you an idea of the size you're dealing with with this little compact board, here's the Mini next to a full-size Magma and a TKL board for comparison. This is the HyperX Alloy Origins. I think this really helps put into perspective how small the Mini really is. It can save you a ton of desk space. So for someone that's kind of tight on space, or if you make big sweeping mouse movements with a low sensitivity and connect with the side of your bigger keyboard, something that happens to me all the time, then having something small and compact like this can actually make a pretty big difference. Now with the compact size, you do have to give some stuff up, like arrow keys, the number pad, and dedicated media controls. But as we're now used to seeing on these smaller boards, a lot of that stuff's still there. It's just hiding under a function layer. So with the function button, you can open up access to arrows, page up and down, volume and lighting controls, play, pause, forwards and back. So it's a way to get some of that missed functionality back. Plus, Rocket has their easy shift mode on here that lets you toggle to a secondary programmable function layer and expand the capabilities of this board even further. So if you're fine using key combinations to access functions, then you can actually get this thing set up so that you're not really missing all that much compared to a full-size board. Keycaps on here feel like pretty basic plastic. There's nothing here that's really standing out to me in any way. There's a little insert in there that attaches to the board and that's how they kind of make contact with the membrane system underneath. The bigger keys like the space bar and enter have metal stabilizers to add some support and stability and they work good. It feels like a nice amount of support and a nice clean press no matter where you touch the key. So I'd say those stabilizers are definitely working. Now let's talk about these membrane switches. Some people are gonna watch this video just so they can comment and be like, oh, membrane switches are terrible. Everybody knows if you're any kind of serious gamer, you gotta use mechanical or you're never gonna make it anywhere. I disagree with that. I've always been a fan of membrane boards because of the soft, squishy feel that they offer and the low noise profile. It's just a comfortable system to use and you don't get that loud, annoying clanking sound with every single key press like you do on a mechanical board. And I like that. The actuation point on here is midway through the stroke, so you need to get the key moving a little bit before it actually registers. And as soon as you reach that midpoint, you feel the switch activating, so it's really easy to tell when you're about to make a full press. And then there's no hard bottom out to finish it off, it feels smooth and clean, and then it rebounds really quickly when you let go. I think it feels like a fast, quick, and responsive system. Definitely fast enough that it's not causing me any problems when I'm gaming, it's not holding me back in any way, but to be fair, I'm definitely not a professional esports level player. Let's jump into the sound test so you can hear for yourself what this thing sounds like.
Rocket threw in a couple other features as well, stuff that you do want to see on a gaming focused keyboard. We've got 20 key anti-ghosting and an IP33 dust and water resistance. I mean, I don't think I'd be putting the mini in the dishwasher to clean it, but hopefully if you have a small spill, you'll be covered. If you've never used a Rocket product before, they have a software package called Swarm, and it's a free download on their website. It gives you some customization options. Some are useful and others not so much. For example, you can set how fast a key repeats when held down, and I think that could be useful in some cases, but then there's some stuff like sound feedback that plays a sound through your headphones or speakers every time you press a key. I've tried it and it actually drives me a little bit crazy. I find it pretty annoying, so I just recommend ignoring that feature. The two other tabs in here are great though. You've got your key assignments for custom configurations and functions, and then you got the illumination tab to take control of the lighting. There's a few presets there, including AMO, which is what I like to use, and you can set up custom profiles, but there's no onboard memory. So if you take the keyboard with you to another system, that information won't follow you. Considering the price, I think the Magma Mini is a winner. It's a well-specced gaming keyboard from a name brand with solid performance and access to a good software package, and that's something that can be lacking when you buy into a more generic budget-focused brand. At the end of the day, membrane switches aren't going to be for everyone, but for those that actually like the idea of a softer, quieter switch, then there's really nothing on the Magma that I can see that should be holding you back in any way. It's a solid performer at a good price. Purchasing links along with full specs and details are down in the description for you. Check that stuff out and get subscribed for more content. And we'll see ya.